there's an uncertainty factor in human design. You don't know where it's going to take you. The strength of human design is transformation. This means shattering and this means that a lot of things that had importance to you, eventually, they just wear out. It was in 2002, which is hard to believe it was 21 years ago. I had a friend who was a very accomplished psychologist in New York City and she was a Freudian uh, psychologist. And she called me up and said, Barbara, I want you to go to a forgiveness class with me. It was a very intense three or four hour class about self-forgiveness, forgiving others. And then after the class, I said to Donna, I am so done with New Age classes. The next afternoon, we went to a Christmas function at the Open Center in New York City. It was a lot of fun because there were a lot of creatives, intuitives, healers. And as fate would have it, I sat next to this one man named Peter, and he said, I can read your genetic code. And I've discovered or worked with this man who has a mapping system, and this can absolutely change your life. And I said, great, let's do it. I scheduled a session with him. And the only thing I remembered was wait for the invitation. I ended up getting an invitation for my friend Donna. There is a human design workshop. It's an intensive up in Martha's Vineyard. Would you like to go? And Ed Stanton was a teacher and he was a primary student of Ra's. So over the next year, Donna and I went to several of these trainings and got our analyst degree. Then I met Ra, and he was very aloof, but very present at the same time. It was an interesting combination. He had an overhead projector and pieces of paper that had bits of information, and then he would talk. His storytelling was magical because he'd take you on this journey of the story and then all of a sudden you'd realize he was wrapping in the keynote, the gate, the specifics of an aspect with a design that was part of his story. It wasn't dry, it wasn't, this is the curriculum, we're gonna learn this and this and this. It was like, buckle your seatbelts, we don't know what's coming on today. <laughs> I found that the early teachings of human design were very simple. They got more complex at the last, let's say from once, Ra was online. Then the classes started just boom, 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 booming because it wasn't dependent on travel. What I found the advantage to that is there wasn't a desire to get it out on Instagram or take two or three courses and then go out there and tell the world about human design because I'm in my 22nd year and the deeper I go into it, the deeper I realize the inherent contradictions and dilemmas, all these things are very, very subtle. Human design is a system of knowledge which is shamanic, which means that as you take it in layer by layer by layer, it changes you. And what does it change? It changes your perspective of how all the information works. I think the challenge that any individual has is establishing a curriculum for learning. And what I realized is what happened to Ra, his teachings were codified into a curriculum, but not all of it was codified into a curriculum. It's almost like once the genie is out of the bottle, how do you define what the genie is, what it does? Curriculum development with human design was handed over to Linda, who can organize things exceptionally well. Ra did work with Linda in basic, the book, the human design book, um, the Definitive Guide, which is excellent. And before then, there were a lot of different books, little booklets that we received before the Definitive Guide was, you could say, published. That was right before Ra's passing. So there are a lot of little pamphlets which include information that are not included in the curriculum and that are not included in the major book. This is where you kind of have to explore and put your own curriculum together. Many people have asked me, if I can't study with Ra, where do I go to learn this? This came to him through the voice, this came through him. Go to the source, when you go to his words, when you go to the keynotes, it takes you right into something inside of you that's beginning to awaken. And in that awakening, you begin to make decisions as yourself because you feel more relaxed about it. And you're not thinking about it, you're just kind of moving along with it. Full disclosure, there's the International School of Human Design. There's also Human Design America. And then there's also Jovian Archive, which has source material from Ra directly. 
If you want to go through the classes, try the International School of Human Design, but check the teachers out. It's a little challenging because you have to find your teacher. Do you want to be self-taught? Then go to Jovian Archive, then go to the Free Media Library and look at all the recordings and just listen and listen. In Human Design America, they have a library of books where you could have a Living Your Design student manual, Rave ABC student manual, Rave Cartography student manual, and it allows you to have information that has not been interpreted by people who never studied with Ra. Frequency is what's transformative, not the information. And I think that's what can be lost over time. We're in very dangerous times now. We're in dangerous times because the frequency is changing and 2027 comes and the world will be very different. Now when Ross spoke about that, he said in one word, it's not apocalyptic. But then other places he'd say, we're moving to the dark ages, we're sitting around fires. He was very uh, ambiguous in terms of what was coming and yet we see what's happening. And I would like to hope, or I hope, that this information will liberate more people to listen to their own truth so they're not led into their own self-destruction. Because right now, right now the world is, and, and one thing Ross said, you cannot save the world. So all of you people out there who say, I'm gonna go save the world, get real. The world isn't gonna be saved, but you can be through really making decisions as yourself. It's not about What's my gene key? What pearl sequence? What this? It's how do you make a decision? Once you're in your mind, you're gone. You're romancing, and there's nothing wrong with that. But my hope is that people will remember that human design is about decision making. And it's about decision making that liberates you from corporate interests, from governmental programs, from school indoctrination, from parental callous disregard, whatever it is that you're able to love yourself enough to say, hey, I'm gonna try this out. I'm going to trust that by making decisions according to my definition, my design, I can live a life that's truly mine and it will be my armor that will protect me as we move into 2027. That's my hope.